This is a testimony and outreach to the Mormons, the Mormon members, the previously uh, called the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, who've recently changed their name. They're not Mormons, refer themselves to Mormons, and they're called, just simply called the Church of Jesus Christ uh, today, currently. Uh, according to the LDS.org and the uh, leading of the church and their prophet to be more Christ centred. Um, this is my testimony and uh, to refute the truth that it's the only true church and in fact it's, um, it's false, it's heretical, heretical and um, the Mormon members are cap kept in a captivity and bondage to a occult system. So um, I would invite um, the mem any member uh, uh, watching this, viewing this, to not trust my word, but trust the word of God. I'm going to use the uh, Mormon King James Bible. As you can see there is the Joseph Smith translation, it's the Old and New Testament with the Topical Guide, Bible Dictionary. Now previously I was a member myself briefly, before I became a Christian, became born again and, and was very weak and vulnerable and I got snagged into this um, powerful uh, church simply because I didn't know uh, the Word of God and I, I, I trusted men over the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus Christ and His Word. So from His Word, because this is a King James Bible, um, I am I know I know that uh, Mormons um, follow a prophet over the the Holy Word and they don't believe that the the uh, old texts are, are trans translated correctly. Uh, so conveniently they will use, um, dip and choose which parts they use and so I'd, I'm going to invite the, the member to carefully examine the word of God, to trust God and I'll read a few scriptures. I'm going to start with um, just quickly uh, Psalm 12 and to invite you to consider now can, uh, can the almighty powerful God not preserve his own word and leave us a faithful record of, of the gospel as it was first preached by the power of the Holy Ghost, breathed, um, breathed by the, the grace of God, by the Holy Spirit and his godly men, the apostles. Now consider the apostles are the foundation of the church, the rock by the power and grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, his death, burial and resurrection. And the foundation is secure and it's laid. I'm going to share all the scriptures relevant to this case and this outreach. But I want to start with, to consider, well, can, can the Almighty, can the Lord Jesus Christ, can God the Father and the Holy Spirit not preserve his faithful word? So, so, um, the church teaches that the prophets will never lead you astray, but throughout history, throughout the church history, uh, they've changed doctrine, they've changed their position, and um, you cannot trust man, because um, in Romans it says that none of us are righteous. In the Old Testament it says our, our righteousness is as oily rags. Um, and we can uh, only trust the the Holy Spirit and God. Um, let's go. Let's read Psalm twelve. This is a faithful um, a faithful promise from the Lord in Psalm twelve. The words of the Lord are pure words. This is verse six. I'll start with. Um, Verse 5, for the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I rise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. The words of the Lord are pure, pure words. 
a silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt pre preserve them from this generation for ever. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. So when men are put um, above God, the wicked walk on every side and they support men over their faith in the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. One more scripture in um, Isaiah 4, chapter 40. I believe it's chapter 40. It might be 28. Uh, verse 8, uh, chapter 40, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Now, so the question is, can can the Lord not preserve his word? And is, is, um, is, is the Lord more reliable than the flesh, the man? Um, whether you believe that they're holy men of God or not, and to consider that an apostle was a one-off um, calling, that uh, the apostles were personal witnesses. Even Paul, the apostle, was a personal witness of the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. And they died for their faith. Their, their testament was sealed by their blood, as the Lord's was. And that is the foundation of the church. And um, once that foundation was laid, it could never be removed. Now the question is, have the apostles, the apostles in the, the, the church, the Latter-day Saint church, have they seen the resurrected Saviour? Now I know that they hint that they have, and that they leave it suggested that they've seen the Lord. But um, only the apostles saw the Lord, because today we live by faith, not by sight. So... Uh, seeing seeing Jesus Christ is is not doctrine doctrinally true because uh, we live by faith in which that which was completed on the cross and I know that the church doesn't hold to the cross it moves it to the side now in in the um, Bible dictionary in the latter day saint King James version. It's going to actually clarify everything I'm saying, but you will not. Your um, the church blinkers you because it focuses your attention to what the prophets say over what the Word of God says. Now, in the, in your own Bible, which has been changed, I will show you changes made within your own with your own scriptures, which are ever changing, ever leading leading these people astray, leading these. Um, believers in this this faith system astray now i'm not reaching out in hate to um, persecute the mormons or to, to uh, make them to shape their testimonies and to um, but to really to reach out to invite them to question their own testimony are, are they believing in in, in falseness or are, are they believing in uh, the truth of the word of God over believing in, in what man teaches them over what God teaches and what God has taught and what God has revealed and what God has preserved in his word and um, within, within all the, the topical guide they, they, te they teach correctly but the uh, chapter headings teach error and they lead the believer away from the truth and the simplicity of Jesus Christ and I, I'm going to try and share that and reveal that by uh, scripture by the word of God so I'd like to invite people to examine the scriptures and the scriptures I share and present and to not trust what I say but to trust the word of God and read um, from Jeremiah chapter 17. I'll start with uh, Proverbs 3. Um, Trust in the Lord, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, Jesus Christ, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, 
and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honour the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and the, thy presses shall burst out in new wine. My son, despise not the chastising of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. So my question is, do you, um, do you love the Lord? Do you know the Lord? Have you been born again? Or are you trusting in what man teaches? Um, because there's many false prophets, many angels of light, many false Christs in, gone out into the world. The Lord, the Lord Jesus taught this. He warned. He warned of the apostasy in the last days. Now the church claims it's the only true church and all other churches are of the devil. Well, there's some truth in that. Uh, many churches are false, many churches are corrupt. The scriptures teach that. And the Mormon church and the leadership hold to much truth and they mix it with their errors and their, their own doctrine. Um, and the, and the Word of God and the Holy Spirit will deliver anyone who's sincere, who loves the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is an invitation to examine your faith, your belief, and to not trust in man, not trust what I say, but trust in what the Word of God says, and trust in the living God to teach you, um, to seek his salvation, to seek his deliverance to seek his um, understanding and wisdom to reveal to any individual that sincerely desires is contrite and repentant to be shown their error and to be led into truth and to be brought unto the salvation of the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ Jeremiah chapter 17 uh, I'll start in verse 5 Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and make flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the, uh, the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabited. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river. And shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be covered in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding free. The heart is deceitfully above all things. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked, who can know it? So feelings of the heart, emotions, and burning in the bosom, is of the flesh, it, it will deceive you. The Holy Spirit is peaceful, it convicts, and it, it blesses you with the fruit of, um, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, which is soberness, which is correction, which is a good conscience, which, which will lead the believer into all truth. I, the Lord, search the heart, I try the veins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. As a partridge sitteth on eggs, and hatcheth them not, so he that getteth riches, and not by right, shall leave them in the midst of his days, and his end shall be as a fool, shall be a fool. A glorious high throne from the beginning is a place of our sanctuary. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed, and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth, because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountains of living waters. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved without my praise so the promise there is to trust in the Lord above all things and his salvation is is uh, secure it's it's eternal and it was taught to Israel to the Jews and then it was um, in the Lord's ministry it was um, shared with the rest of the world and the gospel was preached to all the Gentile nations and it's remained faithful it's remained sure from the beginning it was faithful and sure before the Lord uh, came to the earth and died and was resurrected. And that was the completion of his work, sent from his Father, from heaven, the only begotten of the flesh. Uh, Jesus said that he was from above and all flesh was from below. 
uh, there's no pre-existence, we're all created and now, now God is mindful of all, all creation and he knows all things so he knew from the beginning who would believe and who would not believe but he died that all, all would have the opportunity to come to know Jesus Christ and God the Father and the Holy Spirit and be drawn unto, or be drawn unto himself and that's why uh, Jesus was a man, he came in the flesh in the express image of his Father and he died, he laid his life down, he suffered all sin and was crucified, lifted up and he, ha he gained the victory over hell and death and the grave and through that operation we are born again, we are saved if we place our trust and faith in him alone and not in, not in the flesh, not in prophets, not in uh, teachers of men, uh, men that teach uh, lies and uh, corruption. Right, let's start with, um, let's go to Malachi. Because it's so easy for men to corrupt the word, uh, the, the Holy Word testifies that men would corrupt the word and it would eventually give the Lord a bad reputation, a bad press and the heresies would come into the church, the, the believers in the Christian uh, church and it would lead many astray. And uh, sadly, um, the Mormon church has been led astray. And it teaches um, heresy and lies. And it's my desire to um, see those people delivered to to know to know their Lord. Um, end of the prophets. The end of the prophets is Malachi. So there was a period in the Old Testament there was silence that the, that the Lord used to speak through prophets and then there was a silent period and then the prophet of all prophets came in the flesh and that was the Saviour, that was the Lord Jesus Christ and he's, he's the, the only prophet, the only high priest, the only the King of Israel, the only God, the only Saviour of mankind and he, he has revealed his will and so the day of the prophets was over because today we believe by faith we, we are saved by faith in the grace and power and merit solely of the Lord Jesus Christ sent from God by the power of God who rose who was who rose the father rose rose him from the grave as as the Lord had power over death from the Father to raise himself up, to conquer sin, because he was holy and sinless, and he had power over all life, he was the creator, he is the creator, and he rose, had the power to come up from the grave. And so the, um, the need for prophets is over, because we have the sole prophet, the anointed holy one, referred to as the son of man, the son of God the anointed one, the, the messenger of the covenant. And he was uh, the messenger that, um, in the Old Testament, he appeared to Moses in the burning bush. He appeared to Abraham before Sodom and Gomorrah was. Um, and, and I know that they teach this in the church. They teach many truths in the church. They use truth and then tie it up to error. And it keeps people in bondage and fear and they trust over a false, um, and now I know that the Mormons don't believe in hell, but um, the word of God clearly teaches if you're not born again, you are, remain under condemnation, John 3, and you will be led into hell, and you will be crying out, Lord, Lord, you know, didn't we do all these wonderful works, didn't we pay our tithing, and keep, keep your commandments? And the Lord said, "Depart." We'll, we'll say, "Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. You weren't born again. You didn't believe. You believed in in falseness over the Word, over the truth, over the, the Jesus Christ, over the Son of God." Well, let's go. Let's turn to show in with the Scriptures what the Lord has revealed. Now, if you don't believe that the 
the book's translated correctly, you need to remove these scriptures and complain to your leaders to clarify well what what's been translated correctly and what isn't. Um, but I, I can testify that it is trustworthy and it's faithful, and and any anyone can know that the simple, that uh, the honourable, the intelligent, the wise, anyone can know that the word of God's faithful and it remains faithful, preserved and true. Right, Hebrews chapter 1, let's read uh, verse 1 and 2. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. So the, the author of Hebrews is stating that God at sundry times and in many ways, in diver, diverse ways, um, line upon line, precept upon precept, spake in times past unto the fathers, the fathers of Israel, because the gospel wasn't for the Gentiles. It, the Old Testament and the teachings of the prophets were, were for Israel. They weren't for the uh, Gentile world. It was only only after um, Jesus was rejected by the majority of his own people that the, the gospel was then given to the rest of the world. And who would accept not 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 the majority, but mainly they would accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Having these last days spoken unto us by His Son, so the Lord now has spoken solely through the work, through the Word of God, through the, the calling of the apostles, the uh, teachings of the epistles to the church. He's spoken by His Son. His Son commissioned the the apostles to um, teach the word, preserve the word, deal with all heresy and lay down their lives for the preservation of his truth, to seal his word, his, his, their mission in Christ to preserve it for the believer so that any individual may know the Lord Jesus Christ personally. So the Lord has spoken by his Son, whom he have appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. So the Father, through the Son, through the Word, in John 1, created the world. <coughs> and the Lord is the heir of all things. All things are the Lord's, and all things will go to the Lord. So, let's go to 1 Corinthians. Um, chapter 1 verse 18 no 1 uh, Corinthians 1 18 uh, but as God is true our word towards you was not yea and nay uh, long scripture Excuse me. I'm looking for the preaching of the cross. Now, I'm sure it's First Corinthians. Corinthians. Well, oh, I'm looking in Second Corinthians. Beg your pardon. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, which are saved. It is the power of God. Um, so the, the Mormon Church re re refutes the cross. It doesn't believe in the cross. It doesn't believe in the finished work of Jesus. So it can teach your works. Um, salvation that uh, after all you can do. Uh, so that's putting the cart before the horse. You, you're trying to say that your works are worthy and you can earn your salvation where the Lord is totally holy and you, by believing in your own works you're denying the faithfulness and the holiness and the preciousness of Christ dying for our sins and our unrighteousness because if you're not founded on his righteousness, you're founded on your own righteousness and your works won't save you. 
So you're keeping the church commandments in vain because you've not received Jesus Christ. Now you may hold to believing in Jesus Christ, but the devils believe in Jesus Christ. Uh, many false uh, Christian churches, the Catholic Church, believe in Jesus Christ. But they, they also don't teach his word. Um, let's see what Paul says in 2 Corinthians. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11 verse 8 um, I robbed other churches taking wages of them to do you a service so Paul's but all, all other religion out of business to teach the gospel as it's preserved and um, taking wages of them, so he's taken their money away to, to provide a service for every man, woman and child. Uh, let's look at First Timothy. So I invite you to study these scriptures and to examine them carefully. And uh, put aside your own belief on what um, what the Mormon Church teaches you, what your leaders teach you, and uh, question it because if it's true, if it remain, if it's um, like what 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 the Jew, what some of the um, leaders of the early Jews says, they said, well, if it's not if the gospel of Jesus Christ isn't, if it wasn't of God, it would come to nothing. So uh, the Jews were of some of the Jewish leaders and of the of the Pharisees or Sanhedrin just just said, well, don't worry if it's, it's not of God, it will come to naught. But they, they feared and um, crucified Jesus, and that's how prophecy was fulfilled because of their unbelief. Um, so if your church is the true church, it will stand, it will stand, it won't be afraid to come to the table and be examined. Uh, but if it, if it will break, if it will crack, then it's not true, and uh, you you're you're left with um, a broken promise. You need uh, you need the rock, which is sure and faithful. Um, oh, it's Timothy. Now this is an important scripture for the uh, the Mormon Church. For God, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. For there is one God, one mediator. Now it's not a prophet because we know that the end of the prophets and God have spoken unto us by his son, who's the only mediator. He's the only, he's the door, John chapter 10. And his sheep know him and hear his voice. Are you his sheep? Or are you switching off your ears, closing your eyes and following your prophet faithfully because you're in bondage to deception and lies. So I'm inviting you to seek the Lord through the only advocate, the only mediator. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be tested, testified in due time. Whereunto I am ordained and a preacher and an apostle from the original apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. So this is Paul. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. So to not doubt and to trust the faithfulness in the surety, the yea, because Christ is yea, he's not, he's not, oh I don't know, I'm not sure, he's certain, he is, he's faithful and he's true, and he will receive any sincere, contrite heart seeking his truth, in repentance, in faith, in the only mediator between the Father and that individual, that anyone who gets in the way of that is a thief and a robber, and your leaders are thieves, liars and robbers, 
and they're leading you astray, they're deceiving you, they're keeping you in bondage to a lie, to a cult, to a, um, a work system, so you're running around spending your life on the treadmill, paying money, paying your effort, paying all your energy into a system that is not going to save you, it's going to keep you in a lie, in a bondage, uh, keeping these false commandments, these works, that you may earn your place in the celestial kingdom. Well, you're born into heavenly places as soon as you appropriate the atonement of Jesus Christ through his operation. And you, you, you uh, inherit heaven. You are entered into the kingdom through the door, through the way, the only way. I am the way, the truth and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. That's what the Lord taught. But you don't believe that, you're not holding to that. I'm going to pause because I have to attend to my uh, my dog, so I'm gonna, I'll be back shortly. Okay, continuing. Let's go to Galatians. Book of Galatians. Uh, let's go to Galatians 1. <clears throat> now, I know um, Mormons have uh, joy, they have happiness, and they have contentment in their faith, but this is only temporary, this is not an eternal joy, this is not um, salvation, this is not of the Holy Spirit, this is just of... Um, the wicked. Um, I think you, you look in the world. There's many. The Lord said, "Those who find their life shall lose it, and those who lose their life shall find it." And the only way to um, lose your life is to um, through Jesus Christ, who will give you a new heart, a new spirit, a new life. Now, if you've um, believed in Jesus Christ, you may have. There may be converts in the church who have received Jesus Christ, but then they're falling away. So this scripture I'm going to read may apply to some, but not to those who hold and have always held to the Mormon faith. But it may apply to a few who've fallen from grace and they've not known, they've not... They've not come to the full knowledge, they've not come, they've not grown in the word, they're babes, and they are caught in deception. So, you have to consider all these things. Uh, let's uh, read Galatians, the Epistle of Paul, the Apostle to the Galatians. Uh, verse 6, I marvel that you are soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. So the Lord's talking to the Galatians in in the Lord's time, or in the apostles' time, who fell away, who received Jesus Christ, and uh, received the Holy Spirit, and then they fell away, they went, they turned away to an, uh, the old, uh, back to works, back to the works of the law, back to keeping the the, uh, the law of Moses and the, what was taught in the olden times. I marvel that you are soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another but there be some that trouble you, and will pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, than that which ye have received, let him be accursed. For I do not now persuade men, or God, or do I seek to please men? Question mark. For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. So the truth will offend the flesh. It will, will aggravate people who hold to falseness. Because God's not a respecter of persons, the gospel is serious. And if you reject the truth, you remain guilty of sin. 
and you cannot put your sins right by works, by good works, because we're saved unto good works by the grace and merit of Christ. We cannot do good works to show that we are proved of God by our faith. We um, do good works by by our actions and our faith in that which we've received. Um, let, let's carry on. Uh, Galatians. So, um, but though we are an angel from heaven, our if you if you study from your the church's history the the vision, the first vision of Joseph Smith changed i think it was about 8 times there's 8 different accounts of the first vision now you may not know that you may not have heard that and there's many things you may not realize and understand about the church because they teach different things in different times of life I was taught by the missionaries that in the Trinity, and uh, but they were just agreeing with my testimony to get me in the door. So I was young and plucked into a full system, and, and it took the Lord to deliver me. It took the grace of God and the Holy Word to convict me of my error and my transgression, and it did sear my conscience. I was very hurt by it. And I offended the Lord, but the Lord's ever merciful and understanding. So I, I would invite people to seek the Lord's love and His mercy outstretched. Now the Lord doesn't love people in in unbelief. He has loved, and He does love. He is love, but He sent His Son to reveal that love. But if you reject that love, you remain under condemnation. And as the Holy Word says, God is angry with the wicked every day. He doesn't, he, he doesn't hear prayers of those in bondage to iniquity. Iniquity is injustice. And church systems, the, the clergy, the, la the laity, or whatever priesthood, or whatever order, whatever hierarchy, whatever leadership positions there are, these are iniquity because they've rejected, they've, they're accursed. And, and the, the Mormon church has believed in another gospel, in, another, in an angel, the angel Moroni. Now, considering the devil has power over all men's hearts. Now, the, I know the church teaches there's only two church bodies. The, the Holy Word teaches this. So it's quite convenient that the church can hold to the truth on one hand and then deny it in the other. And if you're blinkered, you won't you won't see it. You'll only see what what you're led to see, and you'll be told that they're anti-Mormon, they're anti the church, the true church. Whereas um, believers in Jesus Christ are not anti-Mormon. They're just faithful to the. Uh, let's go to Titus. They're just faithful to the original gospel that was preached, the rock, the. Um, the foundation that the gates of hell will not prevail against. So if the foundation was being laid, why did it why did it need to be restored? How can you restore the the death, burial and resurrection, the chief cornerstone of Jesus Christ? He's laid his life down. No nobody can remove that. And but the church teaches that the gospel it used a bit of truth that the christian body's fallen away well it fell away from the beginning um, all the apostles had to deal with heresy and error and that's why we have a preserved word it's not open for private interpretation it, it, it's open to every individual to study the word that's what that's why we have the king james to to put the Bible, to put the preserved word in the believer's hands so they're not trusting over what this church says or what this religion says or what these experts, these scholars say because God chooses the simple and foolish things of the world Colossians, uh, Corinthians 1 to confound the wise if a child can't understand the gospel then it, then it, then it can't be understood by anybody and all people can come to a knowledge and wisdom and the understanding because the Lord's grace is sufficient for people the Lord knows people he has loved and his love is outstretched but if you have not received his love you do not know the Lord you do not know God you know of him 
and it's my invitation for you to seek him and know him personally be delivered from the yoke of bondage and come to the knowledge of the, the faithfulness of Jesus Christ um, let's read uh, Titus Paul the servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness in hope of eternal life which God that cannot lie promised before the world began but having due times manifested his word through preaching which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Saviour to Titus my own son after the common faith Grace, mercy and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Saviour. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldst set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city, as I appointed thee. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly, for a bishop must be blameless as a steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, not, not no striker, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate. Hold him fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things that say or not for filthy lucre's sake. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true, wherefore rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess they know God, but in works they deny him being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Um, but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity and patience. The aged women likewise, that they, they be in behaviour, as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers of at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Um, right, well, before I read the whole scripture... I need to look something up quickly. Okay, I've got the scriptures mixed up. I wanted Jude, not Titus, but I'll read Titus. Uh, finish, I'll continue. Uh, verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Bringeth salvation, so we're saved. If, if we believe, we're saved. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present world. Now I know that the um, church, um, uh, do all these good things, they are kind people, They're, they they live all these, uh, strive to be righteous, they strive to keep good homes, and live by family values, but many in the world do that, many people, um, can produce good fruit through the appearance of good works. Now it's an appearance. It's it, it, it's not, is it founded? The question is: Is it founded on on God, on the Rock, on on love? Does it come from the Holy Spirit? Because none of our works are righteous. We can only be moved by the Holy Spirit of God, which is love, which is edifying. And if we're denying the truth, how how can we be founded on 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 love? So our good works are just a show. They're just trying to behave righteously. It's putting the cart before the horse. 
um, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Saviour Jesus Christ who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority let no man despise thee so that's the authority of a believer to rebuke and to teach the word as as I wanted to share this scripture from uh, the Lord's stepbrother Jude Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation it was needful, needful for me to write unto you so is this um, are these scriptures corrupt, are they not translated correctly or are they translated correctly and has God been faithful and preserved his word um, to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. It's exactly what I'm doing. I'm contending for the truth. Excuse me, which goes against the 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 Mormon Church. So I'll be accused of hating Mormons or overturning their faith or uh, you know attacking the tr true church my invitation is is it the is it the faith which was once delivered unto the saints by the original apostles who died and to examine the apostles in in your church are they are they contending for the faith as it was first preached that is the question well, I return to back to Galatians um, about works, how how the works and how we are saved by grace unto good works, and 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 Paul is revealing to the Galatians the difference between the works of the law and the the believe the believer's faith in in grace unto good works, unto the preaching of the gospel, unto the sh inviting people to be saved, to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and his death, burial and his resurrection and his, um, his sovereignty on the right hand of the Father, interceding for all men, interceding for the believer and uh, outstretched to the the world who remains under condemnation because of their unbelief um, Galatians uh, 2 I'll quickly skim over but I'll invite invite uh, invite you to examine all of the book of Galatians the book of Ephesians and the book of Colossians to study be a Berean and to not trust in what I say but trust in the word of God and to to seek the Lord's will above anyone else's and, and, and to seek his word and to know what the truth is right here we go this is Paul teaching about um, how man is not justified by the works of the law by doing good works it doesn't justify anybody. It doesn't. It, 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 there's no uh, credit in the eyes of God for doing good works. The only the only thing that is good you can do is first to believe in His Son, to kiss the Son, lest He be angry and you perish in the way. Psalm two, verse sixteen, Galatians two. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law but by the, by the faith of Jesus Christ. So we're justified by our faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. So we remain sinners, although that we are justified by our faith in Jesus Christ. 
If therefore Christ the minister of sin, God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. transgressor. For through the law, and dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth within me. This is the born again believer who has received the Holy Spirit of God. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. So all the sacrifices that were made in the temple, which has been abolished, the law has been uh, completed, it's been fulfilled in Jesus Christ, and we are justified through faith in it, in what he has done that we couldn't do for ourselves. And then we are moved unto good works because we've received the love of God and we desire like the Lord for all men to be saved and we love our enemies as ourselves and I love the Mormons I love I care for people I care that they are holding because I've been in that experience I know you know I have a bit of skin in this in in, in this area and then I know how powerful the hold is within Mormonism over people's lives and how devastating it is to realise you, you've been deceived and the Lord will mercifully reveal and help anybody who, who seeks his understanding and grace that he will deliver them and completely restore them to a, a joyful life in it and um, salvation to know that they are saved to know they're going to heaven and they don't have to do works to please God that, that our works can't please God it's only through his merit that we serve his grace we serve his will and it's his merit it's his it's his reward it's his glory all, all good all good things are from God and we can only ser we can only partake in that we can only be servants and a believer has been purchased and, uh, and they are owned by what Jesus has done for them. He's purchased their life and we are servants to his glory, to his work, to his holiness. And we cannot be justified by our own good works. So keep, keeping the commandments in the church is you're trying, the church is teaching that you need to earn your salvation after all you can do to appropriate the grace well it's denying the grace you need to receive the grace first fully and then you, you're moved unto good works and um, you won't know that until you've received Christ and been born again um, I'm going to carry on reading a bit more of uh, the law I'm going to read Galatians 3 O foolish Galatians who have bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? So Paul's asking the question. So, uh, uh, applying that question to the Mormons. Um, have ye received the Spirit by the works of the law? So after all you can do, are you going to appropriate the Lord's atonement by your good works? Or by the hearing of faith? Uh, the Mormons haven't received the Spirit at all because the, 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 the church doesn't teach. It teaches another gospel. So if you've always been a believer of the Mormon church, you've not received the Holy Spirit. You are... You've received a false spirit with an imitation of holiness. You haven't received the Holy Spirit. Um, and you cannot um, receive the Spirit by your good works. You can only receive the Spirit by um, believing, by humbling yourself and realising you're no good and your works are no good. And that God is um, holy and, and perfect. 
and you are unholy and imperfect. All the time I was in the Mormon church, I never once heard anybody confess that they were a sinner. And when I, when I um, gave my testimony in a priesthood meeting, that, that I, we, we, I died daily to my flesh, I was laughed at. You know, what, and they, nobody could understand what I was talking about. Um, and, and I also um, testified that Jesus was equal with the Father. It, it, like it says in Philippians, that um, the Lord considered himself equal with the Father. It, he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, because he was the Word of God. He's the second member of the, the Godhead. And I was um, kicked, you know, laughed out of the out of the um, the meeting, you know, the pe you need you need the Holy Spirit before you can comprehend the the things of the Spirit, because the things of the flesh are at, uh, are at enmity with the Holy Spirit. So all your good works will come to nothing, and you you will be robbed of your salvation. There is no celestial kingdom. There is no um, afterlife. That the Mormon prom the Mormon Church promises the celest the celestial the terrestrial and the celestial kingdom. There is degrees of rewards in 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 heaven, but we are all equally saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. So I read that again. The only this only would I learn of you speaking to the Galatians. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Are ye so are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? Now this is talking to people who've been saved. Are ye now made perfect by the flesh, by your own good works, trying to please God and show that you're a good person? Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministereth to you in the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doth he do it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. If we read in Luke, um, of the account of the, the um, humble man beating his chest and going, Have mercy on me, Lord, a sinner. And then the other Pharisee giving, being seen to be giving big donations into the, the temple treasury and in, into the donation pot, you know, claiming how righteous he was by his good works. And the Lord said, oh, which, which of these do you think is justified? And, and the Holy Spirit convicted the, the person the Lord was answering, uh, asking, and, and, and the Lord revealed, well, the one who was um, humble confess that he was a sinner have mercy on me Lord I am a sinner and he was justified by his honesty and his faith in Jesus Christ where the Pharisee showing off that he was righteous was condemned by his own good works because his good works were a stink they were wicked because they denied the holiness the pureness and what Christ could, has done for all men be becoming sin for us that we could not do that ourselves we cannot change our DNA we cannot change our sinful natures we need to receive a holy nature which is fully of God it's fully of grace it's fully of Jesus Christ he therefore that ministereth to you in the spirit and worketh miracles among you doth he do it by the works of the law by the hearing of faith even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen, through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee all the nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Faith alone. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So if you live by the commandments, you're trying to keep all the commandments and all the teachings of the church, you fail in one of those points, 
claiming that you are justified by your works, you have to keep the whole law. And if you fall down in one area, you can't stand before God and say you're holy because you failed on that point. You didn't get 100% like Christ. He lived the whole law completely. He was faithful and plus he died and he, was, he rose again. Only through Christ can we be justified. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith alone. The just shall live by faith, and the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. So Christ suffered a curse death, even though he was holy and righteous for us. He, pay, he, he paid for our sins, our curse. We are cursed because we are born sinners and we are lost. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereunto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promise promises made. He saith not, and to seeds as many, but as of one, and to thy seed which is Christ. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul, that it should be made the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Therefore, then serveth the law, it is added because of transgressions, till the seed should come, to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promise of God? God forbid, for if there had been a law given, which could have given life, verily righteousness would have been by the law. So the law was the outline and the fruits of what a righteous, it was a schoolmaster, I think it's in Hebrews. So it's the expression of holiness, so the law was of God, it's God's working of righteousness, but no man could live it, so that's why the, the commandments were given, that they would keep in line, to keep on the straight and narrow, to um, prepare them for Christ, because that's what the law was for, until Christ came, that he would fulfil the prophecy and the promise given to Abraham who was justified through his faith because he believed he believed in Jesus he believed in the Father in Jesus and the Word of God um, anyway, I'll carry on reading uh, is the law then against the promise of God God forbid for there had been a law given which could have given life Verily righteousness should have been made by the law. But the scripture have concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ may be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Oh, here we are, schoolmaster. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. So the temple and the ordinances of the temple were for the Hebrew people to keep them in the straight and narrow way until John the Baptist came and preached repentance to believe in the, the, the one to come into the, the holy fire, the Lamb, the Son of God, the Saviour, the Seed, Jesus Christ, the High Priest and the Lord and the Living God that we might be justified by faith, but after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. And the temple was rent, the veil was rent, and there was an earthquake, and that was the end of the temple. That was the end of the need for the temple, because the temple today is, is the believer's uh, body, and, and the Holy Spirit dwells within the believer 
through faith in Jesus Christ. But after the faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. For as many of you as have been baptised into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. So that clearly we are saved by faith. Right, let's have a look at the commandments. What are the commandments today? It's clearly in 1 John... Um, First John chapter three. Let's have a look. First John three twenty three. And this is his commandment. So um, I was reading the church website, the Latter day Saint Church website. Um, exhorting people to be more Christ centred and to keep the commandments of the church to remain faithful and worthy and to partake of the sacrament meeting and to be a covenant temp a temple worthy member and to do all those beads and deeds to remain faithful to the mormon or the mormon church but this is the commandment in the scriptures given this is um, against what the church teaches, but this is the word of God. Um, 1 John chapter 3, verse 23. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandment dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that we abide if in, he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. So, how do we love God and love one another sincerely if we haven't believed in Jesus Christ and received his love for us? So God loved the world, and you won't know that love until you've received it. When you've received that love, then you, you will genuinely love. You will have his Spirit loving within your heart for all men. Now you may not always feel, because we, you, you're saved from being a sinner, you remain a sinner, but you've been received the grace and love of God, which keeps you in the Spirit by faith. If you turn from your faith, you'll return to the flesh, your old nature. But Christ has given the believer a new nature, wherefore we can love God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our strength. And we can love one another, and we will believe and we will love our enemies as ourselves and that is the commandment and that, and that is that's what moves a believer unto good works to genuinely have that love for people it's not something we try and imitate it's something we've been given it's a free gift by the grace of Jesus Christ right, let's have a look at uh, 1 John 4 Beloved, believe not every spirit. So there's many spirits in the world, you know, and so this is an invitation for Mormons. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is he that this is that spirit of Antichrist, where whereof ye have heard that it should come, it should come, and even now where it is in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because ye greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us, he that is not of God heareth not us, hereby know ye, we the spirit of error, the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. It was manifest 
in this was manifest the love of God towards us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him here in his love not that we love God but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins beloved if God so loved us we ought so love to love one another um, now, the, now the Mormons will claim that to believe in Jesus Christ and uh, the Father, but um, the trouble is, uh, you don't believe in the real Jesus Christ. You believe in another Jesus Christ, so you're not believing in the G the true the Lord, the true Saviour, the true Jesus Christ sent of the Father. Therefore, that's the spirit of Antichrist. You're against Christ because you're holding on to a false gospel and a false message and that will lead many people into hell and I, <clears throat> that's something to consider, consider, seriously consider um, right let, let's, let's look at some scriptures Mark 13 let's look at some more scriptures Mark 13 uh, verse 21, 23, Mark 13. And then, if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, believe him not. For false Christ and false prophets shall rise, and shall show signs and wonders, to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. But in those days after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. So this is talking of the period of Jacob's trouble. But there it is. There, this is the Lord himself teaching that he taught, the Lord taught, uh, not to um, believe in uh, if Christ is here or this is the true church, that's the true church. For false Christ and false prophets shall rise. So many false prophets and many false Christs have arisen continually and will continu continually arise to seduce people away from the truth, from the word of God. Um, let's go to Second Peter, chapter 2. Because the devil is the ruler of this earth and he will, he will sift people who haven't got the uh, the Holy Spirit have has that doesn't hold to the victory which is secure and sure and given. Um, Second Peter chapter two. Uh, I'll read the whole chapter. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall rise false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of, and through covetous shall they be covetousness shall they with fame words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not, for if God not if God spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment spared not the old world but save Noah the eighth person a preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes condemn them with an overthrow making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly and deliver just lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the unbelieving of the wicked for that righteous man dwelling among them, seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh, in the lust of uncleanliness, despise government, presumptuous that they self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil at dignitaries. Whereas angels which are greater in power and might bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these are natural brute beasts made, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward, reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots are they, are 
blemishes, sporting themselves while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and the heart they have exercised with covetousness practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosar, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumbass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds, that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For whom they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome of the same is he brought in bondage. For if after they had escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they had known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. The holy commandment to believe in Jesus Christ. For if it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they had known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog has turned to his own vomit again and the sow that was washed to the wallowing in the mire so there we have it so um the full men of the flesh in the appearance of righteousness have given the bad the lord um a bad name um i was re i was li listening to a uh a, Ju a judaic ministry um, concerned about the Mormon Church, how they baptised their people and how it aggravated them and had they, they had no right. Uh, so that's one example, in the, even in the eyes of the, the, the people of Judah, the, the, the people in Israel, the Jews in Israel, they are absolutely horrified by the behaviour of Christianity and it's, it's led many people astray and it's given the Lord a bad reputation and um, brought in these heresies of this baptism of the dead. Now, I just want to show something. In, now, the, the Mormon church has changed their Bible. This is an old Mormon church. Everything in it, this is all Mormon chapter headings. Now, I'm going to go to Second Chronicles chapter 4, just to show... Uh, believers in, in Mormonism something very obvious that you are blinkered to see it but if you're sincere and you're honest and you examine this you'll see that the temple is over it's finished and what what is claimed and preached as the temple and what it's for you know to enter the celestial kingdom to seal you to your wife and to do baptisms, baptisms from the dead is taking scriptures out of context. Now the temple was rent, the the veil, the high that the high priest would enter was split down the middle. Christ is the high priest of high priests, and he fulfilled. He was the high priest entering into the holy, holy of holies, and offering himself the lamb as a sacrifice for sins and that put the end to the temple ordinances and 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 God the Father when his son was killed and rejected he he caused an earthquake and it split the temple and the foundation broke and it ripped the the holy vow and that was a sign to those people that his word had been fulfilled that his work on the cross was finished and it is over and it was clearly it, it clearly shows in the scriptures if you open your eyes and look. Now I'm going to show you something to consider. Um, I want Second Chronicles, not First Chronicles. Uh, chapter four. Now this is the um, if you can read the uh, chapter heading there. And I'll read it out. So this is the, the, the Mormon Bible. Now they've changed this now because um, 
I personally gave a testimony of this on YouTube and a week later they brought out a new Bible. Now is that coincidence because it, the, the, the corrupt evil powers within the Mormon church are keeping an eye on what's being said about them through their ears and their eyes and their little fingers and they realise that this, this mistake, if members were to see this and realise from the chapter heading what a lie it is, because it's a lie that they would lose members in bondage and they wouldn't be made merchandise of, because that's what you are, you're being made merchandise of. Solid, right, this is what chapter 4 says and states from the Mormon prophets, the Mormon authority that apparently they won't lead you astray and they're, no, they're unchanging although they change all the time and they are leading you astray. Solomon makes the molten sea brackets, baptismal font. So consider the word sea. The sea in this chapter is, is the font of water, which the Mormon church claims to be the baptismal font for the dead, where they do proxy baptisms. Now this is abhorrent to the Jews because the Mormon church started baptising dead Jews and the Holocaust Jews. They even baptised Adolf Hitler and, and they went amok baptising people that they wanted to redeem from the grave. But once you've rejected Jesus Christ and you're appointed unto once to die, and it, is, it says in Hebrews, if you've rejected Christ and if you think of the testimony of the, the poor, rich man and the poor man, and 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 in before um, in in uh, Sheol or in the grave, and there's a testimony given of of the division of the righteous and the wicked in um, in the grave, and one was uh, in torment, and the poor man was with Ab in Abraham's bosom, and the. Uh, the rich man was crying out to warn his uh, relatives not to follow him into the into hell. And when Christ was resurrected, he took up the righteous to paradise, and 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 um, the wicked remained in hell. So that the the righteous and those who believe and die go straight to heaven, go straight to paradise. Whereas before there was a division in, in, in the ground, in the grave. But because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who descended below all things, entered into hell, showed his victory and his holiness and preached for three days and uh, testified to the wicked that he was righteous and delivered uh, the believers into took them up into paradise and they were there was many resurrected and, and walked through the streets of Jerusalem testifying and glorifying God and praising God and like the thief on the cross he went straight to paradise with the Lord uh, oh, because he believed he just believed um, so the sea the molten sea Solomon makes the molten sea quest, uh, brackets baptismal font and places it on 12 oxen, right? So the Mormon church claims that the the uh, original font was for baptisms of the dead, and that's the new revelation. But this is in fact what it is for. More, right, I'll read the, read the scripture. Moreover, he made an altar of brass, 20 cubits the length thereof, and 20 cubits the breadth thereof, and 10 cubits the height thereof. Also, he made a molten sea, which, you, which is claimed to be the baptismal font, of ten cubits from brim to brim, round in compass, and five cubits at the height thereof, and the line of thirty cubits did compass it round about. And under it was the similitude of oxen, so this is the twelve oxen it's put on, which did compass it round about, ten in a cubit, compassing the sea round about. Two rows of oxen were cast when it was cast, it stood upon twelve oxen, three looking toward the north, and three looking toward the west, and three looking toward the south, and three looking toward the east, and the sea was set above upon them, and in all their hindered parts were inward. So there's clearly describing the baptism, what you claim is a baptismal font in the latter day. I've never, I've never been in the temple to see 
to see the to the font, but I know it exists. I know that uh, proxy baptisms were performed there, and it's a mol it's the molten sea on the back of twelve oxen. I've seen it in the in the glossy pamphlets of the, the of the, of the church, and the thickness of it was a hand breadth, and the brim of it like the work of the brim of a cup, which with with flowers of lilies, and it, it received and held three thousand baths. So it had it held three thousand baths worth of water. He made, he made also ten lavas and put five on the right hand and five on the left to wash in them. Such things as they offered for burnt offerings, they washed in them. But the sea was for the priest to wash in. So it was an, um, a ceremonial bath for the priests in the temp serving in the temple. It was nothing to do with proxy baptisms. It was for the priests to bath in, to have a wash. That's what it was for. So, what 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 is the revelation now? Why is it changed? It's Christ has fulfilled the need for the temple because the, the holy temple clearly in the word it clearly states is is a body. You know the the, the Holy Spirit in and dwelling in the believer. That's the temple of God. The Lord was the temple. He laid his life down and rose it up. That was his claim. He would raise, raise, raise his temple up and build it in three days. And and the Jews thought he meant the physical temple. He was talking about his body. That's the temple. So a believer is who's received Christ is the temple of the living God and the Holy Spirit. God the Father, through the grace and merit of Jesus Christ, indwells the believer, who's appropriated his atonement through faith alone. So there we have it. So that that you really need to consider. Uh, let's just cover a few more scriptures. Uh, let's go to let's look at the rock um, and how we are saved. Let's go to Ephesians chapter two. Ephesians chapter two. Start chapter 4, uh, verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, where, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, have quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and have raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God have before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past gentles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world, but now in Christ Jesus, who, who ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who have made both one, and have broken down the middle wall of petition between us, having abolished in, in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments, contained in ordinances, for to make in himself a twain, one new man, so making peace. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints, 
and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you, you ye also are builded together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. There we have it. Uh, let's go to Matthew 16. Here. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I the Son of Man am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed thou art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but by my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, this foundation, this testimony, this truth, from heaven, from the Father, a personal witness from the Father, by the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, I will build my church, colon, semicolon, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So the gospel of Jesus Christ did not need to be restored because the foundation is laid and that rock is Jesus Christ. And no man, and hell, no man can remove it. It doesn't need restoring and the gates of hell, all the gate, all that's in hell, all the powers in hell will not prevail against his testimony, his life laid down, his victory on the cross, which can be simply received sincerely by faith. The confession of your sins, believing in Jesus Christ. First uh, Peter chapter 1. First uh, Peter 2. Let's have a look. Wherefore, laying aside all mal malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye might grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom come in as unto a living stone disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, ye also, those that believe, as li lively stones are built up a spiritual house, and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offence, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But the believer, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into the marvellous light. Praise God. Which in times past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which have not a obtained which had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy have obtained mercy dearly beloved i beseech you as strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshy lusts which war against the soul having your conversation honest among the gentiles that were as they speak against you as evil doers they may by your good works which they shall behold glorify god in the day of visitation Right, let's look at some more scriptures. Second uh, Corinthians. No, let's go First Corinthians. First uh, Corinthians three. For 
for other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So, that scripture there. Um, that was second, uh, 1 Corinthians 3.11. So, for other foundation can no man lay. So, it didn't need to be restored. No other man can lay it. And no other man can move it, and no other man needs to restore it, because it's sure. First uh, Corinthians ten. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat. And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock, capital R, that followed them. So Jesus Christ was the, the angel that the Lord used, the messenger, to lead Moses in a pillar of cloud that Moses spoke to face to face with the Son of God. He spoke to God. He saw God in the burning bush. He didn't see the Father. Moses saw and spoke to the Son the uh, messenger of the covenant, the angel of the Lord, who led the children and delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt and into, into the wilderness and then later into the promised land to those that believed and were faithful. And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock which followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. So if you turn away from the simplicity of the truth, uh, you're, you've turned away, you've, you've put yourself, your own belief above God which is of the flesh and that will, like, like the children in, in, who didn't believe in the brass serpent held up and were healed, perished. And it's the same if you don't believe in the simplicity and the death, burial, resurrection of the cross, of the finished work of the Lord on the cross, you, uh, you, you won't enter into the kingdom, you won't enter into the promised land, you won't, re you won't be saved, you won't be born again. Uh, let's go 2 Corinthians. Uh, 1 22 so here's a promise to um, people who've believed in Jesus Christ who have also sealed us and given us given the earnest of his spirit in our hearts um, for all the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen unto the glory of God by us now he which established us with you in Christ and have anointed us in God who have also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. So we've also we're already been saved. Those who have believed have been saved and are saved. They don't need to they don't need to do good works to earn their salvation because they've received the salvation given, the rock laid, and the finished victory of the Holy God, the precious Lord. His holy precious blood spilt to save us. We've received the, the Holy Spirit, the earnest of his spirit in our hearts. Through believing in the simplicity. Um, let's read for Ephesians again. Ephesians 1. The pr faithful promise that is sure, that is received by any believer. Who doesn't have to do works to earn their salvation. Ephesians 1, uh, verse 13. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Ye were sealed, ye were, not you will be, or it's a promise to come, it's a promise that has come and that is sure, it's a rock, 
And if you believe, you have received, you will receive, and you do receive. And the Holy Spirit will seal the faithful believer and they will know that they are saved because they've received the Holy Spirit of God. And, and what the Holy Spirit of God revealed in the Word will be revealed in the believer's heart and the two will agree with one another. Therefore the, the, the believer will know that they are saved because they believe in the faithfulness of his word. And the living word is Jesus Christ and the written word is the word of Jesus Christ. And it's preserved. As I started and testified what the word said in the beginning in Psalm 12 and Isaiah 40 verse 8. Um, Ephesians 4 uh, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby ye are sealed unto the day of your redemption so once you believe you are sealed unto the day of your redemption your redemption in Christ which you've believed and received and then that when you see Jesus face to face you're, you are sealed unto that day until there's a faithful appearing in his promise to come for his saints and you're sealed unto that day which is eternal because it's a probation to receive Jesus Christ or not to receive and perish in the way for rejecting the faithfulness of Jesus Christ who's a, who's a living head um, let's read uh, Ephesians 4 completely I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called this is talking to the believer with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavouring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ, where Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he is that now he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the church of Christ. So the Lord chose the apostles, he raised up elders and he, and he gave evangelists and teachers for the establishing of the rock and teaching of the church which remains faithful and continues to remain faithful and secure and that was for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ which is the same today Jesus is the same today as he, that he's, that as he was yesterday he's the same eternally he's unchanging, he's unwavering to all come in come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So that is that's the promise that you receive the fullness. That we henceforth be no more uh, no more children tossed to and fro and carried about of every wind of doctrine by the slay of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. That speaking the truth in love may grow up in him in all things which is ahead, even Christ, from whom the whole body fit, uh, fit, fitly jointed together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making the increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles, walk in the vanity of their mind having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lavish lasciviousness, to work all uncleanliness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversations the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, 
and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbour, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole still no more, but rather let them labour, working with their hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give, have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamour and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and that you, kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. So clearly, you cannot ever, you cannot imitate these things. You need to do these things. You need the Holy Spirit, the Spirit, to the re renewing of your mind, so you can live unto good works not by your own flesh because if you're not on the foundation all your good works are filthy rags they are unfounded and that that's a picture of the uh, Mormon church um, so I think I've covered everything I'd like to really but I could carry on going uh, but I just didn't um, sincerely reaching out to the Mormon church to anyone who's um, unsure or disheartened by their faith feeling that that it's not fulfilling their their lives and that it's empty and it's vain or those people who've come out of um, Mormonism and lost faith in it but they've fallen away from the grace of Jesus Christ I just invite you not to give up on the Lord, not to turn back, but to seek Him. And if you've been, if you have been born again, to be restored to that simplicity, and that um, that that joy and that peace that only comes through receiving and believing in Jesus Christ, and to know that for yourself, and to uh, be confident and to grow in the world, in in the Word, and to to be able to boldly come to the throne of grace and petition the Lord and ask him and put all your burdens upon him and, and for him to speak to you and answer you to lead, to, to give you the, um, let's read the uh, promise the Lord gives the believer that we don't need any man to teach us um, we're given uh, teachers to reveal who's approved and, and therefore we, the uh, babes and Believers can learn the difference between heresy and a teacher that's teaching the truth. Today, there's no pastors. There's, although there's people in a pastoral position in the body of Christ, but we're all elders. We're all called to uh, grow into the full measure. I'm going to read Colossians two, and I'm going to. That's what where I'm going to end it. But I'm going to just read the promise to the faithful believer and, and the gift of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit given to every faithful believer who appropriates the uh, atonement of Jesus Christ. Um, this is in 1 John chapter 2, uh, I'll start at 25. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. So concerning any false, falsity, this is a, a reassurance. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it is, even as it have taught you, ye shall abide in him. Right. So once you've received the Holy Spirit, you don't need any man to teach you. You, you have the, um, the full grace of Christ to lead you into truth. You have the Holy Spirit that will teach only truth. And it will uh, teach that what is error and what is truth. You have the Holy Word, which the Holy Ghost will teach what is true. 
and it will teach that the word is preserved and if you're reading anything false that's been added to the scriptures the Holy Ghost will uh, teach you and lead you to discover that that is a uh, false um, I just want to check something John 14 uh, verse 26 but the comforter which is the Holy Ghost whom the Father will send in my name he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whomsoever I have said unto you so that was the promise that the Holy Ghost the comforter the, the faithful promise that the Lord would send the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So there's a promise, and there we go in First uh, John 2, but the anointing which ye have now received, to those that believed, of him abideth in you. So after the cross, uh, John, First uh, John is teaching that you've now you have received the Holy Spirit, and it abideth in you. And you need not any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it taught you, you shall abide in him. Because once you've received Jesus, you cannot, you will never lose that testimony. You may fall away, you may turn back, you may slide, you may slip, and you may upset the Lord. But once you've received Jesus, you're never, you're sealed unto the day of redemption. You're eternal security your eternal salvation is secure forever um, what you receive in heaven after you are saved is another matter that that's dependent on what you do once you are saved so we're saved unto good works and we are saved unto liberty where we we have a freedom to choose and freedom to choose and be guided where we, we are best placed to serve. It's our liberty to worship. It's our liberty to um, live according to the Spirit as we desire. As long as it's in line with the Lord's Word. His heart, mind and will. Um, within the context of his purpose, his plan. Is what he's ordained for each individual to sh to uh, express what the Lord has done in their life uh, to glorify God by good works by the grace of Jesus Christ now I'm going to finish in 2nd Colossians this clearly shows uh, um, what, what, the, what the Lord has done in the believer's life for I would that you knew it for I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you. This is Paul speaking to the Colossian saints. Colossian saints. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea. And for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words, like another gospel or another, or this teaching or that teaching, contrary to the word of God. Uh, for though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit. And Lord, uh, praise God that, Paul is with us in the spirit because he's, he's left the word of Christ he's left the word preserved in the scriptures so this is a, a, applicable to all the church all the believers in Christ this is what the epistles are for they're for the believer today for though I be absent in the flesh yet I am with you in the spirit joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in your faith on the on the rock, you see, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with faith, 
Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and through vain deceit. After the tradition of men, like religion, like organised religion and cults and uh, church hierarchies and orders. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. So we're saved by what Christ done, we're circumcised in our hearts by what Jesus done for us, the circumcision, the one, the faithful, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who have raised him from the dead. So, so Christ, death, burial and resurrection, his going into the hell, going into the grave, overcoming sin and death, is the baptism of the believer. Trusting in him, we appropriate his atonement and he takes us through that, what we couldn't pass through ourselves. And only he could do that. Only Jesus has the keys to hell and death. He's the Alpha and the Omega. The first and the last. Buried with him in baptism. Where, wherein also ye are risen with him. Through, through the faith of the operation of God. Who have raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins. And the uncircumcision of your flesh. Have he quickened together with him. Having forgiven you all trespasses. So once you believe, all your sins, past, present and future, are forgiven and they are left on the cross. And any, any, any sin that believer um, does after they are forgiven of all their sins has to confess their sin to remain in that closer fellowship with the Holy Spirit and God. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out the way, nailing it, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink, or in respect of a holy day, or new moon, or the of Sabbath days which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshipping of angels, intruding in those things which he have not seen, vainly puffed up in his fleshy mind. And not holding the head, not holding Christ from the believer's life, not sticking a prophet in the way, not sticking all these laws in, in, in between the believer, the head and the body member parts. Not holding the head, that's what it means, from which all the body, by joints and hands, having nourishment, ministered and knit together, increaseth with the increase of God. So the believer is increased by the grace of God from the head, from he who's interceding on the right hand of God in the believer's life. Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why as though... Why, as though living in the world, are you subject to ordinances? So all the ordinances of the, the, the LDS Church are redundant. Touch not, taste not, handle not, which are all to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men. Because that's all they are, commandments of men and doctrines of men. And that's why they change and that's why they're like reeds in the wind. One minute they're here, one minute they're over here. One minute the garments were this long, the next minute the garments were that long. Well, one time you can't do this, you can't do that. The blacks were cursed and now they're blessed. And it goes on and on and on. And, and the church is incrementally leading you astray on a daily basis because it's denied the foundation and the simplicity and the grace of Jesus Christ and it's put its own works its own work system in the way of the believer and their saviour Jesus Christ and it is anti-Christ, it's against Christ it deceives, it leads people away and, 
and within that raises up perverse people, perverse children. Now you might have the appearance of good works, but your works are in vain because you've not been founded upon the rock. Which are all to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men, which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will worship and humility. So you can apply that to the Church of the, the, the Mormons, the Latter-day Saints, or the Church of Jesus Christ, as a, today another thing that's changed. You know, that was a revelation, and now the revelation, oh, we don't need that anymore, it's a mistake. So, that, so one prophet can write over the next prophet. I, I was shocked to discover that prophets used to teach that, um, I never knew this and I was never told this, that the father pregnated Mary. Now, do you know that? If you're a Mormon, do you know that? And do you believe that? Well, I, I know that that's a wicked lie, that it was by the power and holiness of God that the, the Father changed uh, within Mary, and it was a miracle birth. I, I don't know how it was done, but the Lord's seed was... Um, the Lord's DNA was... Um, given into the womb of Mary and that's how the Lord, the Holy Lord uh, was um, conceived. He, it was no physical intercourse from the Mormon God, the Father. He didn't come down and have sex with Mary. That's, that's absolute blasphemy. That's disgusting. Um, it was by the grace and power of the Holy Spirit that done that mir miraculous work where the Lord was... Um, given to Mary, you know, and Mary gave birth to the Son of God, the Saviour of all mankind, which things have indeed a show of wisdom in, in will worship and humility and neg neglecting of the body, not in any honour to the satisfying of the flesh. So all these um, good works just causes pr pr pride and it gratifies the flesh and it, and it, it brings about, it may bring contentment, it may bring happiness in, in a temporary sense, but it doesn't bring eternal peace, it doesn't bring eternal, it doesn't bring the joy of the spirit, it doesn't, it doesn't bring the impart, in, in comp, impassable joy that a believer experiences from the, the love of God, the grace of God in their lives. And once you've tasted that, you will you will always, that, that will help you continue to believe and you will not be able not to believe and to continue faithful. So I'm going to close there and end and I'm, that's an invitation to any uh, Mormon member to try these things and consider it and trust the word of God, trust in in, in Jesus Christ. If you love Jesus Christ and you want to live a Christ-centered life, first you need to be born again. Read John chapter 3 and then read John chapter 10 and, and then question, are you one of his sheep? I don't want to kick anyone's faith from under their feet, but if, if, they, if, they're, if you're living a lie, wouldn't you want somebody to point it out? Didn't the uh, awesome Pratt invite people to say, if we're in error, please come and show us because we sincerely desire to know. Well, you are in error and you are deceived and your prophets are leading you astray and they are founded on the, on the sand. They're not on the rock. They're not apostles and there's no prophets today because God has revealed by his son and that's all the believer anybody needs is uh, the pure and holiness and, and what Jesus has done for all man mankind. So I'm going to close there and invite, um, invite you to study that out and consider that and I pray that you will be delivered and saved from the yoke of bondage of uh, false religion and lies because the devil has strong, it's a stronghold of Satan and it teaches the truth to keep you prisoner. It teaches that that uh, say, it teaches the truth about Satan, he, he deceives the whole world and many religions are apostate, they've gone astray and that, that they've been forced from the beginning and, that, and they've been against Christ to own the gospel, to counterfeit the gospel so there is some truth in the, um, in the Mormon church but just remember 
this one scripture. I'm gonna close with this one last scripture because it's uh, it nails it. And consider is is God able to preserve His word or is He not? Is God faithful or is He not? Has He preserved His word or has He not? And if so, where is His word? Well, I have a testimony that His word is preserved within the King James Holy Bible, and the copy that the Mormons hold is the pre the, the circa. 1900 it is a faithful translation it's just that the chapter headings have been given a twist so they don't all, all the chapter headings don't correlate with the text but the text is accurate there's, there's very little very little error if any at all um, first Corinthians just to close Uh, 18 for the preaching of the cross remember that's the finished work and what the Lord said on the cross Father it's, fin Father it's finished you know consider what was finished but it's his work and salvation so on the cross is our salvation hung and rose again from the grave the death, burial and resurrection believe in this that's what that's the only thing that's going to save you for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness so if you deny the cross and the power of God you will perish in hell if you don't believe in hell you need to look at the Old Testament do a Bible search do a Get, go to a Bible search engine and put in hell. You'll, you'll find references to hell in the Old Testament and the New Testament. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved it is the power of God. Amen. And I, I have a testimony of the faithfulness of the finished work on the cross. And that's my invitation. For, the, for you to be saved. And I close there in the beloved, precious, holy name, Jesus Christ, my Saviour. Amen.